So now that I've built my latest version of my app, I'm going to close all of this stuff. I'm done with Notepad and I'm done with Terminal for the moment. Command prompt. And uh, I've got my version 2 of the APK, which I want to upload to to Amazon. So I'm going to shift gears to, to talk about that a bit. And it's not too complicated. So I will go over to the, de the Amazon developer's website. Anyone remember what the Amazon developer website is? Developer.amazon.com Developers, developers, developers. And then we're going to sign in. Sign in with the same information we've used previously. So I haven't logged in since last week, but if I did, it would have told me submission live. My app is available. That was back on the 21st. Um, that was that same day, wasn't it? Thursday? Hmm. Pretty fast. Does it have a time stamp on that? It's made live. No, this was when we created the Amazon developers account. Well, unless you use the same password, it might be. But this is the password we created, we used when we created. So, does this. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have a timestamp. I'd like to know. I'd like to know when it happened. But anyway, my, my app is live. And now, the big idea here is I've signed in. I've come in here. Uh, I don't have any downloads yet. Extra credit if you download the app. Um, but what I want to do is, I don't want to add a new app, I want to add a new version of an existing app. So I wouldn't go there. This would be to create a brand new app. Let's say I created, you know, yet another amazing calculator app. So I would go in there to add my new app. I'm not trying to do that, however. I want to click on my current app. Uh, and this takes me back to this takes you back to the app itself. This is our current version. Add an upcoming version. So we have all these other things that we can do to it. Um, what's this review status? Introducing submission history. Oh, here it is. So there is a time right here. I uploaded this at 8.04 p.m. and it was ready by 9.30 p.m. Now, um, just to show you this before I forget, um, if, you, if you're looking at your app and you go to the binaries tab, um, this is what it saw about the first version that we uploaded. And then on the bottom right corner, remove from App Store. So if, after you learn all of this, this is just a testing app and it's all fake and you can just walk away from it and never mind about it, or if you want to delete it and clean up the App Store a bit, you go through this link here, and then you can take out this testing app. So the app is, that process is inside of that binaries screen. But you just go over to the binaries tab. Yes? Can you review that top line again where it says apply Amazon DRM? What that does? Um, this is to copy protect your app, so a little bit more of the security. If someone downloaded my app, on their device, it has a unique fingerprint attached to it. So if then I hack my phone and get that APK and mail it to everyone of my friends, they're not going to be able to install it because the DRM, the, the, the unique identifier, doesn't apply anymore. Suddenly now someone else on their phone has a different unique identifier trying to use the same app and it won't work. DRM is digital rights management. Who has the right to use this app? Can you change that uh, inside of this? Uh... After we've submitted it at this point, from this screen, notice I don't see any edits here. I believe when we're about to do the upcoming version, version 2, I believe we can change it there. 
Uh, it may be, however, that if we do add DRM at some point, we might not be able to remove it. We'll see right now. Uh, but that might be something to think about in the beginning. Do I want to let people freely distribute my, my app, yes or no, um, early on? These other screens, I do have the ability, if I go to General, I am able to edit these different aspects of the app. Uh, but what I want to do is add version 2 of my project. So let's go look at, uh, at the top upcoming, add upcoming version. Click add upcoming version and it says this will create a new version. Yes, that's what we want. We want version 2 um, of our project. Add have you made have you made yours live already? Have you did you get it published? Do you see that it says current version live? Yeah. So once you submit it, then you can do version two. You need to make sure you've got green check marks on all of these, and then you'll be able to hit submit at the bottom right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a version two then of this. Clicking on Add Upcoming Version, it confirms you're going to make a new version. Click OK. What happens here now is um, uh, we've got um, takes us back to the binary, and we want to. <clears throat> remove the old one so that we can upload the new one so I need to go get my uh, APK version 2 It's uploading, it's going to scan my config XML and various other files and, and see here it is seeing version 2, never mind that 8, but it is seeing version 2, and then it's seeing that's what I wrote there. Um, if you look at show more, this is where it sees your permissions. Remember last time we saw permissions, there was a big list of them. I didn't say anything about it on purpose. And then now that we've removed these plugins, we go to show more. Um, so it's saying right here, permissions. Access, lo access course location, access find location. That's the GPS to be able to uh, broadly identify a person's location and a little bit more detailed. Check the Wi-Fi state, be able to use the internet, and vibrate. If you have more or less of those, it's just that you had more or less plugins. I'm going to change the binary alias to 2. Because again, this is version 2 of my um, my app and I am seeing right here that I am able to change the DRM at this point when I'm adding the new uh, APK so at the bottom I will click to save I'm saving my new APK at this point, I could, um, I could uh, submit, uh, but the point of releasing a version 2 is that we've got new features. So it's asking for release notes. We have a brand new tab here. 
as I said earlier, if I wanted to upload different versions, you know, one version is for these devices, one version is for that device, I see up here, upload another binary. But I'll just, just one, one binary for myself. But now I get a new tab where I need to get a green check mark, release notes, what's new? We need to edit these release notes. It's just a box. Write something here. Please describe what changes you've made. Amazon, you're missing an apostrophe. So here I'm going to write um, share the... You can write this however you want and you can get very creative such as you, know, you can write um, new features and write some new features. You can write here bug fixes and write bug fixes. You can write whatever you want here. You have, uh, I guess you might have a limit, but here then you can write <coughs> something like this to really show people what you're getting. I find it very annoying when there's a brand new app download and there's like very little to explain what's new. Why would I bother? Uh, sometimes features are removed and I want to keep the old version of the app as long as I can. I remember I was holding on to in like Instagram version 1.0 for so long because when they went to 2.0 they removed a couple of my favorite filters. But then, you know, eventually I needed to upgrade and now I don't have it anymore. Share the app file. Why don't we sell it? Why don't we entice it? Share via social media. That contact the contact the developers not I don't think is a great selling point, so I might not mention it, but I might say something like Facebook, Twitter, etc and many more. The waste of inputs. Just to at least have one bug fixed. Did we fix any bugs that were not working? So, like, you want to be able to buy a product from the app? Mm, probably, probably a plain old Amazon link. You know, if you've got some kind of product that you want to buy from your app, probably take the that share link. If you want the whole functionality of an actual buy button and such, I'm not exactly sure about that. There might be some code inside of the developer console here, somewhere in the help file, of how to integrate the, the buy button right into your app. But just off the top of my head, I would do it by getting the share link here. It might not be the best answer, so I would look for it in the, in the help file. So when it's It'd be interesting to figure out because you know the, the, the world is open with with Cordova and, and and PhoneGap. It's we can do so much with it. It's just finding out how to do it and implementing it because we could be adding you know mobile ads to get some revenue. We could do that. We could do many things. So I'm going to save my. Save that. I've got green check marks on all of them.
and I will click Submit App. So I've submitted that and it claims that before 9 p.m. on the 27th, version 2 will be available. I have a cancel there just in case I want to stop that process. So there was our process for version 2. The hard part was coding new features onto our app here on Amazon and a, a variation of this is also over at Google Play. Has anyone since last time we met went ahead and created the Google Play um, the Google Play um, account? Yeah. Uh, if you do, that's another way to distribute your apps. Uh, so here eventually version 2 will be available. Let's um, take uh, one more short break. When we come back we'll look at a couple more interesting things. And we'll wrap up for the day. Any general questions at this point? All right. So let's take a let's take a break.